Welcome to this episode of Memorial Cooking Innovations. I'm Leanne Anderson, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and certified diabetes educator. Today, our special guest is Dr. Katja McClellan. Welcome, Katja. Well, thank you, Leanne, for the invitation. Oh, you're it's, welcome. Um, it's a pleasure for me to be here and talk about food. I love talking about food, so it will be very nice. Great. Well, <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I am originally from Brazil, and I have been involved with food and nutrition um, for more than 20 years now. Okay. So I graduated over there in Brazil and got my PhD in nutrition over there. And now here in the United States, I am a, I teach public health nutrition at SFA. Okay, so you're training students. the upcoming dietitians. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Well, and this month is National Heart Month and um, what we're going to be talking about today are some ways you can help reduce or prevent heart disease. And one of the ways you can do that is by eating plant-based foods or a plant-based diet and also eating more omega-3 fatty acids. So first, let's talk about plant-based diets. Mm -hmm. what, what are the benefits of that and what is a plant-based diet? Okay, a plant-based diet is basically plants, uh, vegetables, so fruit, vegetables, legumes, um, and whole grains. So it's a diet that is a whole food diet, it's not refined. And you get fiber and many nutrients with this diet and vitamins. And so it has lots of benefits for to prevent cardiovascular complications or cardiovascular disease. It, it even prevents diabetes because uh, of the, uh, the content of fiber of this diet is so high that is very, very good for people with, you know, uh, diabetes and to prevent diabetes too. Okay, well those are our growing problems, so hopefully today we can help um, reduce some of that. So what plant-based recipe are you making for us today? Today we are making quinoa with broccoli, brown rice, and basil. Oh, those are some of my favorite foods. Yes, yes, they are very good. And quinoa, it's a grain, um, and different from the other grains, quinoa has more protein. Okay. So it has more protein and less carbohydrates, so it's really, really uh, healthy for you. So if you're eating less meat, you're getting some of that protein back with the, with the quinoa. Exactly, exactly. Okay, well let's get started. All right. Um, so what we do, uh, we have a quinoa and I will show you. Um, this is the product that we are going to prepare today. It's a quinoa with brown and red rice. This product is very easy to prepare. It has all the seasonings already. All you need to do is to microwave oh, for awesome. 90 seconds. And then you have um, the quinoa and the brown rice here uh, ready. So this is what we did. So we, we um, first we microwave the quinoa. And uh, the next step is uh, we are going to steam the broccoli. So I brought here, uh, we have here a rice uh, maker. Okay. And we can use the rice maker to steam the broccoli. Okay. So what we do, we put four cups of water um, here on the bottom uh, of the machine, and then we can add the broccoli. And how much broccoli did you use? One hand of broccoli. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then what do we do? We can, uh, there is an option called Smart Steam, which okay. is steam the vegetables into a very good point. It's not mushy, it's crunchy. Oh, so it's crunchy. like a, a smartphone for steaming yeah, vegetables. Exactly. Oh, awesome. So this is the option that we want. And then, there you go. You wait for five minutes and then uh, the broccoli ready will be ready. ready. So what else are we gonna add to this recipe? Um, we will add the broccoli, we will add some tomatoes. Cherry um, tomatoes. Cherry tomatoes. Uh, we are going to add some pine nuts, uh, some cheese, and basil, and some uh, pepper, salt and pepper to okay. taste. Yes. Now what if you can't find pine nuts at your store? Is there something else you could substitute? Yes, you can use all kinds of nuts. You can okay. use walnuts, almonds, Brazil nuts, 
any kind of nuts depends on what you want this is this is what is good about this recipe if you don't have the broccoli you can use asparagus you can use any kind of vegetable okay. yeah i'm thinking to, to use zucchini squash might be good in the summer mm, or yes. um, cauliflower carrots yes. whatever yes. you prefer awesome. and whenever you do um broccoli broccoli is very good with a basil so if you do the 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 dish with broccoli you use the basil if you do with asparagus you would you use cilantro oh okay it, it depends on what kind of vegetable you use you can play with all the herbs right and awesome all so it's very versatile yes very and then you're not adding any oil you're getting your flavor and your fat from the nuts the cheese and the um, basil correct 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 okay. so awesome. it's not going to add any more um fat to the, exactly. you don't add additional oil or anything. Right. That's correct. Okay. I guess the broccoli's ready. Awesome, okay. That was fast. Yes. Nice and steamy. All right, so we're ready to put together all the ingredients and have this dish done for you. Okay. So again, what we did, we uh, warmed the the quinoa and the, the brown rice for 90 seconds according to the package instruction. So what you can do now, we can put broccoli, we can add tomatoes, and we can add uh, the cheese, the pine nuts, and then on the top, we can just sprinkle the basil. And I have some... Um, That's cooked perfectly. I mean, it's not mushy and it's not... Oh. Yeah, it, it cooks, it, it's, um, it's not overcooked, and you don't want to overcook the broccoli. Now, another way, if, for those of you at home that maybe don't have a rice cooker, you can also prepare the broccoli in the microwave. Just put it in a microwave-safe microwave safe dish with a little bit of water, cover it with some plastic wrap or saran wrap, and microwave it for probably four to five minutes, and that will also get that broccoli done nicely for you. See, it's very easy. If you have all the ingredients ready, it's just, it takes a few minutes for the dish to be ready. And you could probably even make this up, you know, the earlier in the day or the day before for the next day and rewarm it if you want it warm or eat it cold. Exactly, you can okay. uh, eat it warm or you can eat at room temperature or even cold. Okay. Yes. So there you go. We have our awesome, very colorful too. Yes. So here we we can uh, we can get so many nutrients from this dish. We are getting protein. We are getting carbohydrate. We are getting good fats, and we are getting fiber. Fiber as well. And um, the smell of the fresh herbs makes yes, it everything makes a big difference. Much much better. So I have here salt and pepper. Just you taste if it's. If for you it's not salty enough, you can add a little bit of salt and you can add okay. a little bit of pepper. Right, and okay. for those watching their salt intake, they can um, you know, adjust the salt according to what their guidelines are. Exactly. So what are we going to serve with this dish? How about some glazed salmon? Oh, that sounds really mm -hmm. great. Yes. I can't wait to <laughs> try that. All right. <laughs> okay, for the glaze. For the glaze, we'll add one teaspoon of sriracha. It's a very popular Sorry. condiment, isn't it, these mm -hmm. days? Yes, yes. And then we'll add half a tablespoon of white vinegar. And I have mustard here, too. I have um, three tablespoons of uh, mustard. And that's the Dijon mustard, is that, that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's the Dijon mustard. So this is the glaze that we are going to put over the salmon. Okay, awesome. Okay. That's very easy. For the salmon. Okay, I think we preheated the um, the sheet pan from in the oven with lined with some foil, so that makes for easy cleanup. Sprayed it with a little cooking spray. And then we're gonna take our salmon, and again, since we're eating less of the meat with this meal, we're gonna place the salmon. I use the cooking shears to cut. The skin is a little thick and difficult to cut with a knife, so we just use those kitchen shears. Pl 
place the salmon skin side down. You want um, that down because it'll stay crisper and kind of hold the flavor in. You don't have to eat the skin, but it does um, help to leave it on. And we just add the glaze. Okay, let's add the glaze. And I think we save just a little bit to um, baste it, maybe if it looks like it's drying out while it's cooking. We may or may not need that, or we can add it at the end for a little more flavor. The good thing about eating fish is the content of omega-3. Okay. So the omega-3 um, is important for the prevention, for prevent uh, cardiovascular complications or cardiovascular disease. Okay. And how, how does the omega-3 work? So we have three kinds of omega-3. Okay. Uh, we have the omega-3 that we can find in plants, we can, in, and we have the omega-3 that we can find in salmon or Fatty fish, fish and oil, fish oil. Okay. Well, should we put that in the oven? Yes, and then we let's can do that. Talk a little more about the omega-3s. And we put the broiler pan about five inches from the, the heat source in the broiler. Just close the door and then about five minutes. Okay. All right. So tell us more about these omega-3s that we like to eat more of. There are many studies showing that the omega-3 that we find in fish and um, fish oil, they are more helpful to prevent cardiovascular you complications. Get more bang for your buck, so they to are. speak. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, they are. Uh, they are better for you. Okay. But the most important thing is to make your diet uh, with several foods, a variety of foods. Just don't stick with one source of the omega-3s. Yeah. And also, mo I think most of us nutritionists recommend getting those omega-3s from our foods rather than supplement in the pill form. That's perfect, that's perfect. If you can eat the food, that's going to be much better for you. So right. if you have your vegetables, if you have your nuts, seeds, and the fish, you're very good. Covering you, all the bases. Mm -hmm, you are, right. you are. So, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, too, a lot of our viewers may not be familiar with selecting and preparing salmon like we did today. I, I for one, have recently started preparing that, and it's really very easy um, for, to start with when you go to pick out your salmon, you wanna um, try to buy the freshest possible and use it within a couple of days. It's better to actually buy the salmon that has been frozen and then thawed at the store rather than some that has not been frozen but held for several days. Um, you wanna look for fish that um, doesn't have any um, loose um, gills or the little um, scales on the back of the fish. You want the skin to be shiny on the bottom and um, kind of a firm fish. When you press down on the fillet, it should kind of bounce back just like you would you know, on your skin. Um, and then you wanna store it immediately when you come home, rinse it off with some running cold water and then uh, rewrap it in some saran wrap or like I did with this dish, I just laid it in a saran wrap uh, lined dish and covered it and put it in the coldest part of your refrigerator okay. until you're ready to use it. So those are just some tips on um, getting that prepared. So let's look at the salmon and see how it's coming along. And that glaze is looking like it's kind of settling in and caramelizing. So usually it takes about five to 10 minutes to do a pound of salmon divided into fours. And the way you can tell that it's done is when that fish flakes easily with a fork. Um, you don't want it to be firm or falling apart because then it can be overdone. The, the key is to not let that fish dry out. Well, it smells like the salmon is ready. I believe so. Looks really good. Okay, you see how that's nicely brown. It's just so simple. It's yes. a very simple, very easy um, recipe. And the way you tell if it's done is if it kind of flakes easily, but not, you know, falling apart. So that looks awesome. You okay. could always add a little more glaze if you wanted to. And I think we're ready to serve dinner. Mm -hmm. Yes. So let's do this piece here. And this is the, the serving size. This is 
uh, three ounces of fish. Yes. And that's how you're supposed, uh, the amount that you're supposed to eat. And you know, rough, roughly if you buy one pound of, of salmon or other protein food and you divide it into fours, once it's cooked, you're gonna end up with about a three, three ounce portion. So there you could add a little piece of crusty bread. And yes. so what we've done today is prepared one plant-based recipe that is heart healthy and then also the salmon with the omega-3s. Um, plus it's quick and easy. Most of us are pressed for time. This is, you know, literally um, less than 10 ingredients and quickly prepared. It would even make a great Valentine's Day dinner. All you would need to add would be some dark chocolate, dark chocolate. a little yes. red wine, mm -hmm. and a bouquet of roses for the chef, and you'll be ready for Valentine's. So thank you for joining us today with our special Heart Month cooking um, show with Memorial Cooking Innovations. Thank you, Kasha, for joining us today and helping us as we try to change the world one bite at, at a time. time. Memorial Cooking Innovations is made possible through the generous efforts of CHI St. Luke's Memorial, the Polk Education Center, Sodexo Food Service, and the City of Lufkin, KLTX Channel 15.